we've got it our first ever van life fine as you could see from that instagram story we just got fined our first fine for for living in our vehicle we, we never camp outside of our vehicles anyway we always try to be discreet as possible someone took a photo of us and basically just rang the police so remember snitches get stitches we've had issues from the very first day we arrived yeah the people <laughs> seem a bit off as well it's like they don't really like anyone but, but the thing is we have to stay here for another two weeks because it's my best friend's stag do in two weeks so he's staying for that but we're thinking of just booking a, a, an airbnb somewhere or, or a campsite. campsite that's what we're doing now got our office set up we'll tell you more about croatia later and about our thoughts about it. I'm still annoyed, so I don't want to do it now. After our initial experience in Croatia, we weren't really impressed. Despite that, we decided to give it a go and book a few campsites in the upcoming two weeks. This is Camping Prepranto, a campsite located at the Playeshet Peninsula, and I have to say it was probably one of our favourite campsites ever. Having to stay on campsites gave us an opportunity to do some maintenance on our van and get organised. First order of business, a new TV. We don't have an outside table, but we do have a TV, which I used as my office monitor, but I've not been using it as my office monitor for quite a while. So we thought we're gonna put it here, use it as a TV, and if I ever need to use it as a monitor, I'm just gonna work here. That's where you work typically these days anyway, Literally, because it's yeah. too hot, it's too too hot, hot to, work to work in the front. But because of all the windows. We'll see how it goes when we drive in, but seems pretty pretty solid so far oh it's just so exciting yes one of our missions in croatia is to collect a parcel we've been sent from the states and why is that a mission well we don't quite understand the system it was meant to be sent to a parcel locker which most likely doesn't exist but it's still on the croatian post uh, website so the mission now is to go to speak to local post offices and see if they know where this parcel could even be. Let's open this. I have ordered a phone case that allows me to take photos and videos with my phone underwater. Basically, you put your phone inside the case and because of the handle it will always float uh, and it won't drown or you won't lose your phone that way we're currently on this campsite which is literally 20 meters from the beach so it's the perfect time to uh, test the new equipment i wouldn't say it's the perfect time because the water is freezing cold so that's going to be exciting <laughs> okay, so it's a Saturday. We've spent three nights on this campsite. We paid 40 euros, just over. And now we're gonna do another attempt on wild camping in Croatia. It's not something we recommend. I was really annoyed for getting a fine, but you know, campsites provide jobs and we actually felt amazing for these past few days being able to open doors and you don't have to be hiding which is what we feel like van life can feel like a lot of times hello and welcome to Arabic I have to be honest, I wasn't that keen on Croatia because of how expensive it is, because of how unfriendly towards van lifers it is. But I have to say, when we get to places like these, you know, it's, it's amazing. Luckily, we managed to get through the night without getting a fine. We got up at 7 a.m. because last time someone knocked on our doors on 7.40 a.m. So we thought a new shift probably starts at 7. 
So if we wake up at seven and leave before anyone can come, then we are safe. So quick tip for you, get up early and leave. And because this whole peninsula is known for wine making and there's so many wine, wine yards everywhere, uh, at about 10 a.m. we've already done a wine tasting, I bought some wine. So. And now we came to visit the little town of Ston, which is kind of at the start of this whole peninsula. And it looks pretty cool, there's a, there's a fortress here and you can see city walls going up, up the mountain. There's quite a lot of ruins in this peninsula, I mean, as you can see. And all I can think about when I see one is how to renovate it and what it could look like. As a house. As a house, but duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> We're back on the campsite, it's 27 degrees, we are right by the beach, it's a Sunday so we've got time to chill, we can't be bothered exploring because it's too hot. We tried. So, beach time. Kinga's just paying for the campsite. And it's definitely a place we would recommend. It's only apparently two stars, but it's amazing. It's by the by the beautiful beach with probably the most turquoise water I've ever seen. Very good. We are in Makarska, one of the most popular tourist destinations in Croatia. We came to see how our boat is doing, so let's get on board. I wish. Spending some time with our friends on the boat in Albania, liquid for life, shout out, made me really want a boat and now I'm really annoyed because I have to save up about 200,000 euros. It feels like this place is more of a party kind of scene to come and more kind of for young people. So you've got the beach on one side and on the other side you've got drink stores and bars. Good morning, we woke up bright and early today, 6.30 because it's so hot that we can only actually do any kind of exploring in the mornings and today we are in the Krakow Waterfalls National Park Welcome to Krakow National Park this beautiful oasis is so nice to be around even at nine o'clock in the morning where the heat is rising whereas here you've got nice shades blue waters almost feels like you're in the jungle there's snakes here lizards reptiles and 222 different types of birds this whole park was created to protect the wildlife we walked for about two hours, which is around four kilometers in the length. We loved it. Absolutely dying going back. <sighs> Take the bus, it costs under a pound. And it's nearly a kilometer going upright, back up. Not fun. By the way, there's a massive car park right outside of the National Park and it's free. And we are in the shade as well. Iced coffee? Today we're going to do some urban exploring as we made it to the bay of abandoned hotels in Kupari. Is it Kupari? Kapuri? What you can see behind me used to be a very busy hotel resort and it's been abandoned since the 90s. The first hotel built here was in 1920 and by the 70s this whole place was booming with an additional six hotels. It's crazy because even today the view is still incredible. I understand why this place was built. Some of the things like the floor has been kept in a very good state. 
and the main clients of this whole resort used to be the Yugoslavian army and you could say it was it was like the high class people with a lot of money so we're just heading upstairs there's still leftovers of furniture wardrobes beds the rooms actually look tiny I expected them to be bigger but as you walk in you had the bathroom and toilet on this side and the built-in wardrobe on that side and probably just a bed and a bedside table because it's so small Right, we're gonna make our way to the next hotel. There's six of them here. I don't think we're gonna visit them all. This one doesn't have a roof. The previous hotel seemed like it was more of the modern ones and this one must have been built as kind of one of the first ones. And there's a sofa here. What you can see on this hotel on the right is bullet holes. This is because in 1990s this place was raided by the Yugoslavian army. It was deemed a strategic location for Croatia and then later it was taken over by the Serbians. By the Serbians? By the Serbs. This whole place has been bought by an investor and every year there are plans to rebuild the whole resort. Well, as you can see behind me, it's still abandoned and it has been for over 20 years now. So today Kinga is driving, I'm doing some work, we are on our way out of Croatia, we want to make it to Slovenia in the next few days. So this country has been a lot of ups and downs and unfortunately we're leaving Croatia on a massive down, I'm f***ed off. My phone broke so I lost access to my online banking, Kinga's phone is sh** when it comes to a GPS and sat nav so we keep getting lost and we spent way too much money in Croatia oh and I've had enough of driving for the next 10 years so yeah well, hopefully in two weeks you're gonna see us traveling through Slovenia and it's gonna be a lot better apparently it's greener so it might calm me down see you in two weeks <laughs>